them what kind of background I have, because we've been you've been working on this for quite a while. Uh, <clears throat> and I'm giving you permission, so good. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, on camera, you have electronic right. back pain, uh -huh. uh, and so so I, I don't think uh, I don't have your file right in front of me, but it, what you remember? What, what's your discs are are, are, your, are, are squished? <laughs> well, so, more than that, right? Yeah, they're they're really degenerate. Well, anyway, so typically uh, through life, like whether that be work, combination work, martial arts. Um, those discs have been damaged, and, and they have created themselves in what we call page generating sites. And, and those damages, unfortunately, is permanent. But right. then there's ways to work around it, and which you, you have all this time. But you can only take it for so far. Right. Um, <clears throat> so you do then need help. So um, the body of this is, is supposed to be an attached structure. But in your case, the body of this has been torn and right. have now become leaky. And the problem with that, with leaky disc, is that the contents inside the disc can start to go into your general body space. Okay. And then, unfortunately, that it's not supposed to be out. So the disc can burst? Not burst, but I think more... Um, I mean, could you say more leaking? Yeah. Leaky. It can It's can like burst. a gasket on an oil right. pan starts so dripping out. <laughs> um, yeah, it's much. I just, I just, I think more like, the, every part of our body is perfect. And... And, but it over with use and time, it, it breaks down. So I think it is still best to describe it as being, it starts being leaky. It, yes, and the worst part can, yes, the worst leak can be a, 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 a burst. Right. We call that like a dis, uh, dis extrusion. Um, <clears throat> and sometimes the damage is so big or the tears are so big, we can't actually see them on MRIs. Mm -hmm. But I think what's important is like, it's not a, like if the fold, you have a big fold, that means you have big problems. It's not that correlation. Okay, so um, size isn't necessarily the, right. the issue. Right, because even with a, an MRI on the lower back, uh -huh. that's not done because of pain. About 60 to 70 percent of images will reveal this bulges and herniations, but the, the, the patient doesn't have pain, low back pain. I mean, there's other reasons why they do, do MRIs on the lower back. Huh. So that's why we go back to this leaky, it's a little, it's a, this leaky description. Because the contents inside the disc are supposed to be outside, you know, the little proteins, right? right? And then, unfortunately, when it goes out to the general body space, then your body says it's the first spot, right. right? And then you have a lot of uh, painters on your surface of the bones, surface of the disc, and, and unfortunately, when you have all these inflammatory processes that attack those nerves, you those nerves become hypersensitized. And what that means is, normally, you can take getting hit, right? Right? Because then. Your, your, your threshold for pain is extremely high. But all of a sudden, when you reduce that threshold, all I have to do is blow on you, and then it sets off pain. Yeah. That's the hypersensitivity. That's that's what's typically going on with the lower back, which is then the reason why you have so much back pain. Huh. I know that in, in, you know, in these past few years uh, in my training, I really had to guard myself a lot. You know, like the way I move, it changed the way I fight all of a sudden because I guess I'm just guarding my back, make sure it's not getting attacked, or, or the way my posture has changed because of this. And that just became a natural instinct because, like, oh, if I go this way, it hurts. Oh, if I do this way, it's not so bad. Okay, I'll do this way then. Right. <laughs> you know, it becomes, oh, common sense tells me, let's right. do it this way. The path of least pain? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, you know, and, and as I've told you, I mean, a lot of times I can't sleep at night or I have all kinds of just crazier problems. I'm like, all right, so what do we do about that? Right. And, and that's what we're working on now. Right. And then the next step, of course, carpers, we can only take it so far. Mm -hmm. Right. Which is the reason why then uh, you have started taking the next steps. Right. Right. So I'm going to see um, Dr. Uh, Fernandez. Dr. Fernandez. Yeah. He's got me on pain pain management right now. Right. And then, uh, and then you still have to see that. But you still have to see the. I'm working on the other guy, the, the, the neurologist. The, yeah, to see if I'm crazy. That's not what neurologists do. No. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Because you, you have such a big um, blemish. Right. It looks like it's actually poking, physically poking on one of the, the, the lower yeah. oh, uh, lumbar roots. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, I've seen that on that little spine that most chiropractors have. That yeah. It, it shows one of the bulging discs. It's almost yeah, out that, of That the, would be me. Yeah, that, that'd be and unfortunately, then, what you're seeing then is um, decreased control of physical control of your 
I think you're left or right. What, what would you say to the to the martial artists out there and to to get them to, to be a little more thoughtful about what they are doing? I mean, because we do a lot of things that are very repetitious. Right. You know, a lot of repetitious moves, and, and or, or we'll take a bunch of punches. You know, just just for the sake of whole learning to to deal with the pain. Good idea, bad idea, or, or repetition is a good idea because that's how you're, you're training your, your neural networks. Mm -hmm. So you're you're more reactive than thinking. Because right. when you fight, you just fight. Right. Or when you perform, you just perform. So I think um, when you do an exercise, repetitive for like one session, the next session you is, you have to work on something different, something else. So keep the body the different Segment. body parts moving. Segmented, yes. Okay. And the reason why that that allows the upper say you're doing upper body, mm -hmm. that gives uh, a time for that part of life to rest, whether it be two or three days. Yeah. I mean, I see that in bodybuilding. I get yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Today's yeah. leg day, tomorrow's chest yes. day, back day, whatever. But in, in what we do, you know, it's, it's kind of the whole body. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, we can't. We can't do it that way. It, it just doesn't work that way. You can't say you, you don't actually bring it. Today down. we'll do kicks. Tomorrow we'll do you know punches. No. Well, no, no. Well, well, <laughs> You know, because when you're sparring, right, it's right. just a fight. Yeah, yeah, it's a you're play. just fighting. Correct, correct. Sometimes it's elbows and headbutts. And sometimes <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it gets ugly. <laughs> it does. It's, it fun. Is. <laughs> it's fun, though. Yeah, yeah. I've been there on the ground, <laughs> sprawling, you know, fearful of a knife coming at you. That's, yeah. uh, you could have used one literally. The, the, the days you don't uh, train, that's your rest days. Rest days are really important. Okay. So the, 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 the in-between days really is what gives, because yeah. the, the idea then is if you're working up a specific muscle group, like when you're, when you're uh, bodybuilding, you want to give it enough time to rest, regrow muscle fiber, that yes. sort of thing. So the intensity of training then in martial arts should be reduced to only once every few days to give your body time to rest. Right. Okay. And then it, I think every day, every training day, no. you're not going at a thousand percent. Right, like, right, I mean, right. You are doing a couple of down days. Right, right, right. One's a more, more, more thinking day. One, another day, so it's more. more now, let more me ask you this: because so think more, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but on that same token, we have sticks right? because we're Filipino martial arts, mm -hmm. and we have sticks. And, and the banging of the sticks, that vibration through the arms, what is that doing? Oh yeah. Is there? A, did that? You know, it's like a battery hitting a ball constantly. Every time, yeah. Every single time. I, I, you know, you're time. right. I think that it's balanced. I mean, you choose to do this, mm -hmm. you will have, you'll be more susceptible to certain injuries. Mm -hmm. um, because that that's a, a big thing that we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think. Um, but then you then you will also recover. And, right. Well, at the end of the class, yeah. <laughs> you stop Even the next day, day right? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I think it, it's 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 okay. Yeah, you'll have. Uh, you have protective equipment in the meantime? No. no. Oh. Just, uh, I, I think that's what it boils down to, really, is, is the <laughs> amount of impact, not just the amount of impact that we receive, but the, the backlash of clashing between weapons that we do when we train. Uh, a lot of other martial artists do physical groundwork and, you know, yeah. what they call rolling you know, on the mat. Uh, some of them do punching bag. Yeah, punching bag, or even punching each other just to build the tolerance yes. for pain. But it seems that the, the running or idea or the best case scenario is you do that every once in a while and the rest of the time you can work on something that's more stretching, more uh, cardio related and less impact on your body and just give yourself time to rest in between. Yeah, I think uh, this, this give your time rest for between. And I think more, more, more importantly recognizing you, have a, you can tolerate a certain amount of pain. Right. You know, I'm, I'm not telling you to stop. Right, 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 right. At all. But, but there's something persistent. Yeah, good luck telling you. Actually, actually you fight. know what? You're, that's right. If it's something persistent, uh -huh. it's unchanging, uh, then get a look down. Okay. So, <clears throat> if you get it really say, you know what? This is something that starts hurting. I mean, it's not your typical, you know, yeah, fight sore, yeah. and you recover, sore, recover. That's not that's, that's what we're concerned about. But say something got hit here. You, know, you, you remember the day one, then day five, day seven, day eight. 20. Okay. Day 30. It's still the same thing. You know what? I think it's, you know, it's just so not changing. definitely wrong. <laughs> Typically, most injuries could heal itself by 30 days. Really? So 30 days are good. is a great. Without any, benchmark. like, extra aggravation. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. If, if it's going to heal, it's going to heal by yourself. Okay. okay. But that, that, that by day 30, if it's not gone away, it's probably going to just keep on going, and if anything, it will get worse. That's what that will be your first benchmark saying, you know what, let me go get this like that. 
Okay, everybody, directly. If you feel something you haven't felt before, mark the date. <laughs> yeah. And if 30 days later it still hurts, get come it see, checked out. Come see, come come see, see Patrick. Patrick. Come see the back doctor. <laughs> uh, you know what? This, this, I remember one of our the, the Muppet lifters. He, uh, yeah. he, uh, he injured his wrist recreationally. But that's one. No, no, he's, he was doing something. So he's <laughs> okay. Anyways, it's fine. <laughs> But he had nationals in like like I think six weeks, and and again it's like you know what I, he you know everything was down his, his lifting was down his matches and things right. were down everything was off right. right and then you know what he finally came to see me it's like you know I, I poked that one spot special spot uh -huh. we call it snuff box right there and he poked there uh -huh. nothing's supposed to hurt no matter how hard I poke and push uh -huh. it's not supposed to hurt. But when you go in there, all of a sudden he's like, he was, he was like, holy crap, that really hurts. Like, I said, this, well, is, not was a, it? this is not a good thing. We shot an MRI, it was a fracture. Oh, right? wow. Like and a radial like, fracture? Or? Uh, well, it's a, we call it a scapegoat fracture. It's one of the eight uh, wrist Ooh. bones. And, which is not a good thing. No, it hurt <laughs> those hurt. Well, it hurts, but it also really screws up the mechanics, right? Oh. Right, with all the lifting and, yeah, right? in this the, case, you're fighting. Well, I had that same problem. I broke this three times, and it's never healed properly. So I have to adjust all my strikes right. and stuff. Yes, you have to adjust. It also hurts more because it protrudes a little more. Yeah. <laughs> the three times ago. Yeah. But, um, but, but he, you know what? But once you know the problem, uh -huh. then you can make a decision what you want to do about it. Including the choice of doing nothing. <laughs> no, seriously. I mean, once you know it's there, right. you're not your... So you're, you're see a high level athlete. It's all mental game, right? right. Yeah. You just learn to ignore it. Yeah, ninety percent is, is just. Yeah. But if as long as you know something's there, you're not wondering why it hurts. You, you know it hurts now, right. and you know why exactly why. And you just choose to ignore it. You can choose to ignore it. You can choose to continue on, uh -huh. or you can choose to stop. Right, and that's all. And you know what he did? He chose to keep on going. I knew it! And of course, I mean, he had to. I, mean, I knew it. No, no, no. no. I mean, <laughs> did he place the Nationals at least? No, he did horrible. Ugh. But he still had to go. I mean, you don't give up your chance to go. Right. I mean, but now you know reason why. You're not kicking yourself, right? You, you're, you know it's exactly what happened. I mean, it's already happened. So let's yeah. deal with it. Right. Yeah, and, then, and then the question at the end is, Oh, I only lost because of fracture in my wrist. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you ever, do you ever try to recommend not to continue? Is that, is that your place to say? Uh, I mean, no, no. I um, my role is to help get you guys back to what you love to do. Right. And if we have to, I like that. Thank you. That's why. No, I appreciate it. Well, no, and and because you've always been very encouraging to me. Right. You, know, you always said, but you got to do these things, and I'm, and I'm <laughs> such a pig headed dumb shit that I don't do those things that I should do. I mean, no, you know, no. just give me a list of the stuff he's supposed to do, and I'm going to get his wife to make him do it. <laughs> I swear, she will make him do it. You know how goofy those two are when they're together? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, she, I, she wants to come in and miss it, by the way. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> she needs an adjustment. Yeah. She really is. No, but, uh, but I think, yeah, I'm well, marking the 30-day mark. That, that's where you start. Like, okay, that gives you a good benchmark of yes, where well, you're at. Um, and then you come see somebody like me, and then and then we identify whether it's a small problem or a big problem. If it's a small problem, then we say, hey, it's, it's okay, we calm you down. Okay. So now you know what, now you know what to expect. Right. right? And then you're not you're not afraid. It's something that's going to be a, a, a career ending injury. Uh -huh. And we just need time. And then so we just focus on that. The worst thing is like if you keep, a lot of people, when they get hurt, they try to keep on acting normal. Right, right? like it's not hurting. Yeah, so you're actually trying to, you try to, to you're injured. Yeah, you're trying to perform at 100 percent, and you damage yourself more. Right, that's that's not normal. Right, right? I mean, you're, you're hurt, you're hurt. No, the problem with when you when you when you keep on going at 100 percent, you are more susceptible to re-injuring yourself. Oof. And if you re-injure yourself, because uh -huh. you, you are, yeah. you're going to double your healing time. Yeah. So it's compounded then. Yes, wow. hugely. So so something like a sprained ankle uh -huh. can take three weeks to repair. All of a sudden, you keep on going. Yeah, it's no. going to be six weeks. And then, then after you keep on going, it's going to be 12 weeks. And then it's chronic pain that you have right, all the time. Right, and then you just lost your season. Ooh. Right? So my role is to then rein you back in. Whoa, Nelly. Calm down, calm down, <laughs> right? calm down. Yeah. Yeah. Here's an apple. 
<laughs> and then we, we start rebuilding. And then, so the fastest, so by just by doing this to do everything properly, mm -hmm. for example, like, again, like a sprained ankle typically takes about four weeks to heal itself. Right. But even then, you still don't know what's going on at four weeks. You think that lady shouldn't have given your attention? Okay. No. <laughs> really? The second time she's been around. He was saying something significant here. Okay. So, <laughs> But if we if uh, but if we do everything right from day one, uh -huh. we can resolve that uh, sprained ankle, you know, psych to moderate uh -huh. within three weeks. So that's a twenty five percent reduction. Wow. Right? And then when you at three weeks, the way you'll be fully confident that it's fully recovered. And how we do it is we, we call it the rest. We never I never had you stop. Right. right. No, so no. basically when you get injured you you, you okay. You can always do something. It's not black and white. It's no. not like I'm injured. I can't. I can't do anything. That's else. it. I'm bedridden for three, yeah. four weeks. Worst thing you do. No, okay. he lets me keep getting beat up by you guys. <laughs> I enjoy it. Yeah. 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 Why, why deny it? <laughs> so, so, but you, you know, you start, but you, you come in and you say, you know what? I'm about thirty percent better, mm -hmm. right? Okay, good. So then we have you then work out to about twenty-five percent of you. So if you used to work out like twenty, like a whole hour. Right. You're only doing like maybe 10, 13 minutes. That's it. And then of that 10, 13 minutes, it's just like 25% of what you used to do. Reps, effort, intensity, right. everything. Okay. And then what that does is like, and then you stop, and then you see how you feel. Right? Yeah. And say, so, you know what, I feel pretty good. I so what we know, more. yeah, what, no, what we know is that you can do that first 25%. Mm -hmm. No questions asked. We don't have to worry about that first 25%. Now we just, and then the next couple of days, we'll start eating up to 35, 40%. So how you feel is a really accurate, really accurate gauge how much you can actually do. It should be. So really listen to your bodies. If you don't feel good, <laughs> but don't do you it. You know, and it always seems to me that that's really hard to do sometimes. Because like me, I, I'm really stubborn, you know, and only because. Which is good. Yeah, but you know how you're feeling. You yeah. just don't admit it to people. Yeah, yeah, but, and that's just my problem. Is I, you know, when I'm training with with a student, say like Naeem, and I know I'm kind of sore or whatever. So, okay, I have a class, I, I, gotta, I gotta be there for the student.